Hey gang, Yuvi here. I'm back again with the portable bandsaw base stand cradle and I've got some updates, some for safety and some just for more awesomeness. So one of the things that concerned me safety wise when I started using this setup was that this area right here had the bandsaw blade exposed and that's because this grizzly bandsaw along with some others rely on a plate that gets screwed into all these holes you know unlike um some of the other brands that just leave this open and it, that's just a ridiculous way to add safety to it because no one's going to use it in order to change the blade you have to remove like one two three four five six seven eight fasteners which just makes no sense and uh, so that's why most manufacturers leave this open but because they relied on that plate, this this area was left very exposed. And like I said, I brushed up against there and, you know, that got me right away. So I epoxied this aluminum plate in there and that solves the problem. So on to the modifications that I made just to make this system a lot better, easier to work with. The This is the original plate and I welded a eighth inch sheet on top of it because the orientation of the original plate was not lined up with the orientation of the cut. So the lines were kind of like, the outer edges of the plate were kind of like this. So I welded this on so that I can reference these sides for pretty decent square cuts. So another addition to the setup is this little material stand here. I've got a pretty awesome band saw. I've got a great cold cut saw. Um, but sometimes you just want to make quick, simple cuts right here. And that's what this is for. So I've got, we've got long, thin, long material. I can just slide this out and uh, get cutting. I added some bits and pieces to this area where the base interfaces so that there's really no play. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention about safety. I, I put in this cotter pin here because I was getting, when material gets stuck on the saw, it wanted to lift up a little bit. And because there was nothing holding it down, it was just gravity that was holding it in. Didn't really think that through, but now I've got it all locked in with this easily removable pin. A little bit harder to get on, but hey, it's quick, easy, still no tools. So I added this push stick so that I can push material into the saw without slicing my thumb open. Another thing I did for safety was to modify the switch. Now, instead of pushing in to activate the motor, I pull out and it's a lot safer to be able to slam this thing in there when I need to shut it off because you know your blade pops out or work gets stuck in the blade you want to be able to shut that thing off as quickly as possible also while transporting it while it's plugged in, which I don't recommend doing, but if for some reason someone were to do something like that, you can't bump the switch in accidentally. And so that's all the safety related concerns that I had that I wanted to address. So someone on Reddit recommended that I put a hook onto the edge of this so that the saw can hook onto the table and then I can push on here without worrying about the saw being pushed back, which made great sense. So I made this adjustable one for very different tabletop thicknesses. I forgot your name, but thank you very much for that advice. I also put some spacers underneath to level the top of the plate with the table and it's pretty darn good maybe off by a, less than a 16. 
that gives me a really good feeling when I'm working on it that this is a true surface. And so thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe, like, share, and uh, have a nice day unless you have other plans. Peace.